Yeah, good. Um, first of all, welcome. Uh, it's finally here uh, for us. You know, I was hired about nine months ago, and as I've said many times, this has been a dream job for me, but now it's become a reality. Uh, we've got to get week one. Uh, I know I'm excited about uh, the opportunity to, to see where we are as a program. You know, you don't, you don't ever know what type of team you have until you actually play a game. So I know I am, and I know the team is excited about having an opportunity to see where we are as a program. Um, we spent a lot of time over the last nine months uh, building relationships that we hope are meaningful that will carry us through the season. Um, there's a good positive energy in the locker room, a good positive vibe, and uh, I really like the culture of our team going into the season. Uh, we had a good camp, a really competitive camp, uh, which you always would like to have. You know, the purpose of summer camp is to develop your roster and develop the depth that you need to get you through a season, and we feel good about where we are depth-wise uh, as a program as we move into the 2019 season. I know our guys are excited for Saturday to get here. Uh, as per normal, uh, they're tired of hitting on each other, and it's great to have an opportunity to play against an opponent like Howard. Um, it's always special when two teams so close together have an opportunity to play uh, with Howard being right down the road. Um, we want to use every one of our game days as an opportunity. You know, we only are guaranteed 12 of them and six at home. So for us, I know it's important to make a great first impression on our fan base with the type of football that we want to play and that we expect to play throughout the course of the year. You know, we'll continue some of our old traditions with uh, 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 game day Saturdays here, but we'll also try to usher in some new ones with the, the new era uh, upon us. Um, you know, it's our goal to, to do a great job of putting a product on the field that our fans can be excited about, and I know our players are excited about that opportunity. Um, and a little housekeeping uh, information, you know, we'll do game captains this year, and at the end of the season, the team will vote on the permanent captains for the season. Uh, this week's game captains are Tino Ellis, Ellis McKinney, and Jake Funk. They'll serve as our game captains for the Howard University game. And uh, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Just raise your hands for questions. We'll bring the mics. In coming to the Jack Litch uh, Law Group office, I felt very at ease. Um, I was treated very kindly, and I felt that this is the person that I wanted to work with. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust, and we have, with great results and great service. Call the big dogs, the Jack Lynch Law Group. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Uh, can you talk about what went into the decision to, to uh, start Josh and, and how much, I know you said during the year that, during the summer, that it was all about what they did on the field this, this you know, in, in practice, but how much of his history of leading a team and having a successful record at Virginia Tech played into it? You know, good question, uh, Don. His history at VTech didn't play, in it, play into it at all because, you know, we've had, we had some guys in our program that have won some big games around here. I know Piggy has taken part in winning some big games and, and has done some good things. We, we basically evaluated them based on how they could operate in our system. Now, the benefit that Josh had is obviously he had a lot of the game experience from his time at Virginia Tech, which I think he was able to lean on in the competition. Uh, what we look for is what we've talked about from day one. You know, the quarterback's job is to move the offense and score points. And so uh, we had all the different matrix and, and evaluation information we needed uh, based on the competition. And at the end of the day, Josh did the best job of putting points or giving us opportunities to put points on the board when we were in live situations. And he also, you know, we, we charted all of our third down situations because it's really important for a quarterback to win on third down and, and Josh played the best. Now, on the flip side of that, it was a little closer than what I even expected going into it. And, it was, and I was glad to see that. You know, Piggy is a competitive guy that didn't just give the job up, and he really fought hard. It was a close battle, and so I feel real comfortable with where the quarterback room is as a whole, probably better than any other time I've been here at Maryland, the depth that we've created. 
and we feel we can win with both Josh and Piggy. And so, as I've always done, you utilize your playmakers, and Piggy's a guy that we feel can be a playmaker for us in our system. And we'll find a role, but Josh is our starter, and it's not a deal where he has to look over his shoulder. Yeah, uh, just to follow up on that. Do you plan to use Piggy in any capacity that I guess is different than just typical backup quarterback? Or would you put him on the field? Well, Josh? like I said, from week to week when we game plan, our goal is to get our best playmakers the ball. If Piggy is one of the five playmakers in our offensive system that week when we start game planning, uh, sure, we'll use him like we use anybody else and find situations and roles. I'm a big believer that when you put your five best skill guys on the field and you make defenses have to defend them, you give yourself a chance to make big plays. And it's what I've done at other places. So I expect Piggy to have a role uh, in some capacity from game to game. What that role will be will be dictated as we start the game plan. Coach, you're right, Dave Preston. Coach, uh, looking at Howard uh, Newton, what is it about him that concerns you? What does he do that puts pressure on a defense that's going to really Howard's quarterback? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when you look at them as a whole, I mean, our biggest obstacle is the unknown. You know, as we try to prepare for Howard, uh, the tough part is, is, you know, Coach Prince, who has an offensive background, uh, most recently was at Michigan, so we studied some of the Michigan stuff. We've also watched some of the stuff he did as a coordinator at Rutgers. Uh, also, you know, his time with the Detroit Lions and the Indianapolis Colts. So, you know, we've been all over the place with trying to game plan or try to figure out what we expect. I do know he's a really sharp offensive mind. I really do understand that he'll find ways to utilize their quarterback, you know, uh, Newton, who is a dynamic player. Uh, he extends plays with his feet. Uh, he can make plays with his arm, uh, has a lot of experience. I think he's been starting since he was a true freshman there. And so, you know, our, we've got to do a good job of containing him and making him win in the pocket. Uh, but I also know that they've got great skill across the board on offense and defense, and it's a it's a great challenge for us going into week one. Up front, Lila. Coach, you you named Tino Ellis as one of you know the captains for the first game of the season. What kind of leader has he you know served for his team and you know through you know spring and now fall camp? Yeah, he's been real consistent. You know, Tino is a man of few words. He doesn't do a lot of talking. But anytime you look at any drill we do, any workout we have, he's a guy that's always in the front, uh, always giving great effort. He has the right kind of habits and behaviors that we look for. And uh, he has a positive impact on others. Uh, people look up to him. They look at him for uh, how he goes about doing his business. And so, again, he's been a great example of the type of leadership that we're going to need. And uh, I'm excited for him to be the leader, of one of our leaders of, uh, of our team. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Um, see you. Curious, you know, you, you show up here, you have an idea roster-wise, the kinds of things that you're going to have to overcome and try and get to your, for ready for week one. From that perception from when you arrived to where you are now, are you where you want to be, or is it, is it what you thought it would be? Well, you're never where you want to be. I mean, our goal as a program is to always strive to be a little bit better every day, and so uh, nowhere close to where we want to be. Uh, I will say this, that I feel good about uh, – the direction that we're moving. I feel good about the culture uh, that, that's been created and our players have really bought in. You know, typically when you come in as a new coach, you have to establish a relationship. And I was very fortunate that I knew, you know, guys that were seniors, juniors, and sophomores on this roster were, were guys that I played a part of recruiting here. So the relationship part of me developing with these guys was already there. Now it's just a matter of putting my imprint and, and developing the style of play that we want to have as a team. And they've been all receptive, and, and I'm excited about it. But until you play a game, and that's why I'm more excited, the opportunity to play Saturday, you really don't know what you have or where you are, and that's what game one is for. Wayne, you're right. Coach, uh, you did a full walkthrough the other day. Is that How did you know that? Uh, I saw pictures somewhere. Okay. Uh, where did that idea come from and how satisfied were you to end up singing the Maryland Victory song at the end? Um, you know, it's what I've done or we've done every place I've been, you know, the game simulation. You know, you get to the week before game, we've done enough hitting, enough banging on each other. But there are some things within the game that need to be taught. Game situations, substitution errors, you know, this is our first time as a program, you know, running through the tunnel. When do we leave? How do we pregame warm up? These are all things that you don't want to leave for chance that they would just get 
by telling. So we basically, Friday we went to the team hotel, we showed them where all the meeting rooms were, we talked about the dress, we talked about how we act when we travel on a business trip. Saturday we uh, rehearsed our pregame routine, uh, everything up to the minute as if it was game time and uh, we left out of there with a good understanding of what the expectation is, how we warm up, where we need to be, the effort, the intensity and then we were able to put together a game simulated script that took care of some of the in-game uh, decision making, some of the in-game uh, football situational IQ that our players need to have and, and we, we had a good day and then we had an opportunity to to have uh, to, to go over to the band and sing the, the, the victory song so that was a good day for us. Coach, uh, you talked at media day about instituting an Alabama offense. Uh, what can a fan expect of a quote Alabama offense and uh, what are some of the weapons that you're pretty excited about uh, in this offense? Well, it's a Maryland offense now um, and, and it has a lot of the characteristics of the things that we've done here at Maryland. Obviously, me coming from Alabama as a play caller, the systems will be very similar, but you always have to start with evaluating your personnel and who your best personnel groupings are, which you know we feel good about. Uh, having a good idea of, of what we need to be from a personnel standpoint on offense. Uh, if you ask philosophically, the key is to get as many touches to the best players on your team on offense uh, because usually if you get your best player the ball enough, good things will happen. And that's I'm a huge believer in making sure your best players are touching the ball. And so we'll do things to make sure our, our skilled guys that we feel uh, give us a chance to win, have opportunities to touch the ball. To your right, Josh. Mike, you, you mentioned uh, not knowing what you have until the first game. What, what specifically are you going to be looking for Saturday against Howard? Well, discipline football, it starts with that. You know, so many times when you play first games, the penalties, the, the sloppy play, the missed tackles, uh, I'm hoping that we're a team, and since the day I stepped foot on campus here, I've preached that to be a good team, you've got to develop winning habits and behaviors, and those habits and behaviors start with not beating yourself. Um, and so uh, what I'm looking for is a really clean game from a penalty standpoint. Uh, I'm looking for us to play with great emotion, but not be emotional. You know, there's a difference with having emotion, but then the emotional part is when you, you, you react to things after plays, when you do a lot of talking, uh, a lot of showboating, that won't be the type of team we're going to be. And I think our players understand that. And then the next piece is just going out and playing with great effort for four quarters. Uh, you know, you look back to last year at us, you know, I think we had four games that we lost in the fourth quarter that we need to learn how to finish. And so we prepared from a conditioning standpoint and how we practice to, to try to finish very fast and finish very strong. When you walk out there, do you expect to feel the weight of this game on an emotional, personal level? Or was that kind of taken care of in December? Be, have emotion, don't be emotional. So uh, you can tell Antoine Brooks there won't be any tears from Coach Locks. Uh, no, I'm excited about the opportunity. I mean, I'm going to love every minute of being the coach at the University of Maryland. I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, but we've got work to do, and so we'll deal with the emotional part when that time comes. But as I tell our team, we need to play with emotion, but we can't be really emotional. Don, yeah, talking about Josh in terms of his leadership, uh, when a guy comes Talking about Josh with, uh, in terms of his leadership, when a guy comes in who's new, um, did you sense right away that this is a guy who people tend to look toward to, you know, for leadership because of the way he handles himself? And, and how does that carry through on, on the field? Yeah, I think that that's a, you hit it right on, but I think the big thing is it's not just Josh. You know, we've added some pieces uh, to our team and to our football family that came from some winning programs, Tyler Mabry at Buffalo, uh, Savoy from Virginia Tech, and then, you know, Shaq Smith and Keandre. They all have brought a, a, a mentality of showing our players, and not by doing a lot of talking. None of these guys came in with the I won this, I've been here, I've been there. They've come in and just have shown our guys and our team the types of behaviors and habits you have to have to be successful. With Josh, obviously, the quarterback position is a natural leadership position. And uh, he's come in and he's done things the right way with how he works, how he communicates. Uh, you see the maturity that he has having led an offense before. But we also feel like, I felt like we got that from Piggy, and that's why I'm even more excited that the quarterback room has created the depth that if we were to have injuries, I feel really comfortable that we have 
some answers in the, in that room. Mike, over here to your left. Uh, you mentioned uh, during camp you have a left-footed punter, right-footed punter. Don't have a named punter. Have you been part of a team that has done a punter platoon before? Have you talked to anybody that's done a punter platoon before? What could you possibly expect if that is a possibility? All these questions about holders and specialists, man. That's no, both those guys have done a great job. And, you know, we've even talked about putting them in the same number and having them run out and not know if the left-footed or right-footed punter. But, um, yeah, we both, uh, both those guys, uh, we're going to have to punt them both. I feel comfortable and confident that they'll both be able to execute it. That competition is still kind of going on because they both have done a great job for true freshmen. And the fact that one is a lefty and one is a righty, uh, it creates some uh, competitive advantages with how you set up your return game. So, uh, yeah, we, we're expecting to probably use both of them early until we can make a decision on which one is the most consistent. Um, but it's a unique situation that I can't say I've been a part of it, but. I'm not afraid to do it. Also on special teams, I saw on the depth chart that you have, you know, Noah Barnes, who's been a tight end at long snapper. Can you tell me what in, what went into that decision? Noah's been a long snapper since he came here. I know when I was leaving in 2015, we were part of bringing Noah in as a walk-on, and part of bringing him in was the fact that he could long snap. So I, I'm pretty sure he just served as a backup long snapper during his tenure here, but. He's also created quite uh, quite a niche as a tight end for us. And so, again, a veteran guy. Uh, we feel comfortable and confident in his long snapping abilities, but he also adds some things to the table of being a tight end. Scott. Just kind of following up on Patrick's question, you know, you already talked about, um, you know, both punters probably can play, but you also have co-starters listed at left tackle. Um, I think the mic position, then also punt returner. So how do you see kind of the snaps and playing time breaking down at those positions with those co-starters? You know, we talk about how to play our players usually at the end of the week. So to, to be able to tell you how we plan on playing them, I know this, if they have an or next to their name, they both will play meaningful snaps. And, uh, you know, with the competition there, uh, we're going to play, you know, both the guys where there are or positions. Uh, it'd be nice to develop. And, and the way you get better as a team is you develop your whole roster. And the only way they can develop is by playing. So we usually come up with how to play the player somewhere near the end of the week once we get through Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday's practice and Thursday's cleanup kind of practice. We'll meet as a staff, you know, Friday, Saturday morning and talk about how we want to play them. But anywhere there was that competition, you know, it's my expectation we're going to play them both uh, in a manner to evaluate and make decisions down the road. To your right. Coach, you talked when you came in about building a Maryland football family. Now that you're coming up on the first week, how do you gauge if that family is coming together? What do you look for to know you're successful? Well, anybody that's had an opportunity, and we've had quite a few outsiders come speak to our team and watch us practice. Uh, and when you see uh, the camaraderie amongst our team, uh, I think that has set in. Uh, you know, the thing with family and when we talk about it, you know, I said this before, teams change every year. You know, last year's team will never be again. This year's team will never be again. Whereas families transcends all the generations of Maryland football, and we've had a bunch of former players come back and be around the program. Uh, what I see is I see a bunch of guys that trust each other and trust in the coaches. I see a bunch of players that respect the guys to the left and to the right of them to play hard and give everything they have. And to me, that's what makes this thing uh, really special, which is why we wanted to call it a family. When you put your own individual goals aside for the betterment of the team, I see a lot of that in the culture of our team. And so, you know, you see that every day with how we practice, how they respond to each other, when good things happen or bad things happen throughout the course of our training camp. Um, I feel good about the direction that we're in. Coach, this isn't your first go around as a head coach. What sort of lessons from a game management standpoint uh, that have you learned at your previous stops, even as the interim coach here a few years ago, that will help you this Saturday? I mean, I just think it starts with having a bunch of uh, knowledge of who we are as a program first. You know, obviously with the game management things, you can't simulate it, but there are some philosophies that you can create to help you manage the game. Um, you know, one of the things that I benefited from was having a guy like Coach Zook here as a, a senior analyst and having been a head coach with a lot of experience. Um, obviously, the time I've spent at Alabama watching and seeing how Coach Saban managed games, 
hopefully some of that stuff rubs off on me. Time for two more. You mentioned some of those team bonding events. Like when you had karaoke night, you had barbecue dinner, things like that. Do you have a favorite of those? Something that really stands out of, of those events, events that maybe your, your players love or you love the most? You know, karaoke was kind of awful. I, mean, I, I, I think we need to teach them that karaoke isn't go to YouTube and pull up a rap song that nobody knows the words to and jump around. So uh, we probably need a little work at karaoke where they learn to you know, sing different genres of music and get up and we, we had some bad karaoke. Um, very bad and it was surprising. But you know, I enjoyed all of them. I mean, you know, just the reaction of the team when we went to the movie instead of practicing, um, the, the backyard barbecue, Sunday fun day, all those events were, were meant to develop a bond and a chemistry that will sustain us, um, you know, because we'll face some adversity. Um, you know, we're a work in progress as a program. You know, year one is to set the foundation. And so, you know, the, the tighter knit we are as a team, when bad things happen, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll gel and bond together and move forward the right way. And so that's what those events were for. And I'm excited about the way the team responded. Mike, uh, with Anthony McFarland, you recruited him. What, what do you remember about the player you recruited and how he has grown into the role he has right now? Yeah, I mean, since Ant was a seventh or eighth grader, having a chance to watch him as a youth football player at some of the grassroots events that uh, Terrence Bird and, and Mike Anderson used to put on, the thing that he's always done is made big, big plays. I mean, he's had a number of explosive runs and his finishing speed and being able to get to top speed really quickly, catch the football. I mean, he's a very multi-dimensional player for us and, you know, having recruited him at some, the other stop uh, and, and I'm glad that he decided to come here and he was here waiting for me uh, when I took over because he's a dynamic special player and talent uh, who works really hard and I think he's really earned the respect of his teammates with how tough he is, you know, usually with a guy like him. They, they don't usually come pretty tough, but Ant's a really tough, hard-nosed kid that uh, you know he'll give it all for give, give it all up for his teammates, and that's what I really like of what a great teammate he's been. Thank you, Coach. We'll have our football student athlete.